Hi everyone, um, today we're going to look at the full reach next um, construct. It's a really powerful command in Excel VBA. It's the only command uh, that you can use to loop through a collection of objects. When I say a collection of objects, I'll use that as an example here. So I've got a number of sheets and I've got a workbook. The collection of objects in the workbook would be the number of worksheets. So I've got seven sheets here. So I've got a collection that contains seven things. So seven sheets in this workbook. If I just referred to sheet one, and I was looking at the number of cells, and the number of ranges I've got, columns, sorry, I've got, an, I've got a, a massive amount, a massive collection of objects. So I've got A, so column A, row one. They're all objects. So how do we loop through these? So the first example, we're going to loop through the number of sheets. What I'm going to do here, because I haven't got a code module yet, I'm going to insert a module. I'm going to call it M for module for each. So my first subroutine, I'm going to say public sub loop through sheets. I'm going to first declare my WS or the worksheet object. So there I've set a worksheet variable. I'm going to also have, um, yeah, first of all, we're going to loop through those. So I'm going to say for each worksheet in my active workbook dot worksheets. So this is just a way of saying my worksheet is this, the current worksheet is this. So for each one of those worksheets in my active workbook, this is the active workbook, and then that's the active number of worksheets. Then what we're going to do is do a message box. And I'm going to say the current sheet is, and I'm going to do work ws, which is my variable name, dot name. So I'm going to use the property of that worksheet. So the property is indicated by this little hand and a little uh, point in something, a little sheet. And you see the little green arrow there, that's a method that does something. So that's like this subroutine does something. So that's a method in essence. So when I run this, it's going to perform a method to loop through each worksheet and provide me with the worksheet name as a message box. So that in, in essence, the subroutine is a method. But if you see the little, again, the little green icon there, that is a method, that's a property. And you'll have other things like, uh, other types like, no, there's just properties and methods in there. So this time we've got worksheet name. So if I now run this, I've got to put next at the end to make sure that for each, it next it iterates through. We're gonna press F8 to see what this is actually doing. So for each worksheet, the worksheet's currently equal to nothing because we've not actually entered the iteration statement yet. But the first time it runs, it's going to go, the first sheet is sheet one, because it is. Then it does the next, sheet two. Then it does the next one, sheet three. Then the next one, sheet four. The next one, sheet five, sheet six, and sheet seven. And then it terminates after that, because there's no more worksheets remaining in this workbook. So each one, that's how you then ob iterate through each object in that collection. And that's just, sorry, in that collection, and that's what we've just done. If I wanted to then count the number of worksheets, I could just extend this here. So I could then declare another variable called sh sheet count as, and we've set it as an integer, a number, a smaller number. So for sheet count, inside the loop, we're going to put sheet count. And then what we're going to do is for each sheet count, so the variable references itself. 
So sheet count then gets changed to sheet count, so the current sheet count plus one. So we're just going to add each time this loop runs, add one. So then when I then want to display this result, I'm going to display this in sheet one in a, uh, the range A1. Sheets, instead of referring to it by name, I'll refer to the index value so I know that the first sheet will be in the first index and there's seven sheets. I'm going to select the range, I'm going to set A1 and then I'm going to set the property of that range, the value property, equal to the sheet count. I'm going to run this again with this um, code module just reduced down to the side a little. We're just going to shrink that down so you can see what's happening. Sorry, that's done it again, locked on. So if I press F8, so it's doing my worksheet, it's doing the count again. It's on sheet two, then it goes to my sheet count. It already knows that the first, it's already counted one sheet. So it counts another, it changes its two. Then it becomes three, and it becomes four. Can you see the uh, little gray box here indicating what's happening to that variable? sheet 5, sheet 6 and then what it does is it ends that subroutine and produces the number of sheets I've got in this workbook which is 7. We mentioned earlier that you could also refer to each worksheet as having a collection of objects which are the cells. So I'm going to create a data range here, we're going to call it, we're going to have values 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and then 90. 900 for no other reason that we want to do that. So I'm going to press Alt and F11 again. I'm going to develop this while it's at the right hand side just so you can see it. So we're going to call this public sub loop through cells. I'm going to call, we're going to create a dimension variable first of all. And we call that dimension variable dim current cell as range. So it's a range object. We're going to set range A3 to A9. Dot select. So we're going to select that range. And then we're going to say for each current cell in my selection for each current cell in my selection so you, as you can see we need to select before we loop through a selection because if we refer to selection without selecting it nothing would be selected to it through an error I'll show you that in a minute um, we can say message box current cell dot value so it will just produce the value so if I then show you that code in full so it says dim current cell is a range object the range is then selected the one that we want to work with this range here Then it says for each current cell so for each cell in that selection produce a message box with the current cell value. So if I press F8 now, I keep forgetting my next, next, just indent that, just so we know that's starting the uh, for each loop. Press F8, so it selects the range of, it's A8, let's just start that again. Select, for each current cell in selection, so current cell currently is equals nothing. So the current cell is 20, then it's 30, then it's 40, then it's 50, 60, 900. Then it terminates because it's run out of that range. So if I excluded this, I'm just gonna comment that out and try to run this code now. Ah, um, let me, sorry. <laughs> If I tried to run that code now, because it was pre-selected from the last selection statement, so that example would have been poor. 
So the current cell's nothing that I've got selected there. So it's not going to loop through anything else because it's not a range, it's just one object. So if there's nothing selected, that would throw an error. So we need to make sure that we use this statement to select things before we use the selection statement. One last thing we can do to this, on the right hand side here we could have um, some calculations based on the value of that current cell. So I'm going to comment that message box out for now and we're going to say current cell dot offset. So the offset property is really powerful. It'll offset from that current cell so each time it loops it'll offset. So we're going to do not a row but a column offset. I'm going to set the value of that, not validation, I'm going to set the value of that to the current cell, to the current cell times by 3, and then we do another one, current cell dot, dot offset. This time we're going to go two columns over. Otherwise, if we only went one, it'd basically print over the top of whatever we've done here. We're going to then say equals current cell to the power of, and we can say 10, something massive. So the caret symbol raises things to the power of. You could also do worksheet function dot power current cell power of 10, that's another way to do it, if you like prefer the worksheet functions. But yeah, that's then what we're going to do, is just loop through that again. So I'm going to press F8 to enter it once more. Current cell, so the range is selected, my selection's there. Current cell dot value becomes 60 because it's 20 times by 3. That becomes something scientific because so we raise it to the power of 10. Again, something really high. 9.77 times the exponent of uh, that plus 16, which is a massive number. So if you wanted to format these to see what they actually are, I'd have to go format cells. And instead of being scientific notation, I have to change it to a number there. So as you can see, we've got massive numbers that is now raised it to the power of. But yeah, that's how you then use that for each loop to loop through cells in a range. And then we basically do each cell in that selection and do something to the current cell. So the current cell itself is a variable and we've set that as a range variable. And then what we've done here is we've said with the current cell, with each cell, offset it by one column, set the value of that current cell times by three. If you hard coded that, it would be current cell in algebra would be, for the first one, it would be 20 times three, which is six. Current cell to the power of 10 is that calculation there. Um, and then it would go on to the next one, 30 times three, we know that's 90, and so on and so on. For each loops can be used in a lot of other settings to loop through database fields, to loop through charts in a worksheet, to work, loop through chart items, so the number of points in a chart, the number of data series in a chart, the number of items in a pivot table, etc. etc. We'll use more examples of these um, in later examples, but for now, I'll leave you with this um, basic understanding of the for each loop. Hopefully this has been useful. If I could expand or um, make my examples more clear, please leave feedback in my comments field of my YouTube page. I've also got um, a website called Hudson's Hacks. Leave me a comment in there as well. All right, guys, hope you found this useful. I'll catch you again. Thank you.